Hello and welcome to the Art Class Curator podcast. I am Cindy Ingram, your host and the founder of Art Class Curator and the Curated Connections Library. We're here to talk about teaching art with purpose and inspiration, from the daily delights of creativity to the messy mishaps that come with being a teacher. Whether you're driving home from school or cleaning up your classroom for the 15th time today, take a second, take a deep breath, relax those shoulders, and let's get started. Hello, everybody. It is Cindy Ingram, and I am back for the Art Class Curator Podcast. So it has been, gosh, almost a year since my last episode. And I want to tell you a little bit about why I stopped and also talk about something that's sort of been bothering me for a while. Um, One of the reasons I stopped with the podcast was not because I was not really fully enjoying it. I absolutely loved filming every single one or recording every single one of those episodes. The conversations were so much fun. I enjoyed meeting the people who I met and reconnecting with people who I had met previously. But it became to a point where I think my perfectionism was starting to overtake me a little bit with the whole idea of creating the podcast, finding the guests, having the conversation, making the show notes, making the images, uh, making sure it was edited. All of those things became a little bit of a burden and it was kind of taking the joy out of it. And so I stepped back for a little bit, decided to regroup and figure out exactly what I wanted from the podcast and how I can move forward in a way that's really sort of authentic to me and how I work. Because I really have have learned that I miss it and I loved it, but that it became a little bit hard to keep up with on the schedule that I had been doing. So one of the things I, I guess I'd constantly battled in my life is this tendency towards perfectionism. And about a year ago, I, I someone told me that 70% perfection is success and 100% perfection is failure. And I that hit me hard because I realized, you know, I am constantly striving for 100% perfect. And then if I don't get 100% perfect, that it is hard on me that I that I am constantly trying to be the very best at everything that I'm doing. And I have learned that that's not really a great way to live. So I am working really hard on kind of taking that perfectionism away and trying to figure figure out like why, where it comes from, why I have it, and what I can do to minimize its impact on my life and and release that fear, because it is fear-based. Um, you know, if I am perfect, then you can't fault me for anything and you'll still love me and all of those things, you know, <laughs> without going too deep in the psychology of it. Uh, that is something that is is constantly a thing. And as my business has grown, as Art Class Curator have grown, has grown, we have more people on the team. Everything is more polished. Everything has been more perfect than it was when it was just me um, behind my computer at nights and weekends while I was working full time. And it has become more of a polished thing. But in, in that process, I feel like it's lost a little bit of its grittiness. So I'm bringing the podcast back. And I'm bringing the podcast back in a really sort of gritty way. So (laughs) what I am going to do is I am just going to hit record. um, And I'm going to talk about whatever topic it is that I want to talk about. I still will do conversations as well recorded, but that I am going to take the pressure of perfectionism off of me, talk about the things that I care about, the things that I know that you also care about, and just have the conversations and talk about all of the things that are meaningful in our lives as art teachers. So one of the things that has been hitting me lately, and it really has been something I've noticed throughout my years of running this business. So um, Art Class Curator began about five and a half years ago as of the date that I'm recording this. And, you know, working online is a very interesting thing to do <laughs> because, you know, we live in this society where we can, you can't do anything right. Um, you know, think about a new mom. There's the there's this meme online that's like lists like 30 things moms can and cannot do. And it says, oh, you're, if you breastfeed, um, your child will get too attached to you. If you don't breastfeed, your child's going to die. You're a bad mom if you co-sleep. You're a bad mom if you don't 
co-sleep. You're a bad mom if you let your kid play on the floor. You're a bad mom if you (laughs) don't let your kid on the floor. Like you cannot win with anything that you do. And I feel like working on the internet is, and even existing on the internet as a person, that this is what is happening with with our field as teachers. Um, You know, you go into the Facebook groups of all the art teachers and someone is saying how I can't believe that they these people do projects like this that are so cookie cutter and everybody's like oh yeah so good that they're terrible and then uh, half of the other people are like no there's a place for this and the other half of the people are just like really upset that you put a picture of their art with a big x in it or something and you know there's no room for just everybody finding their own way and everyone doing the best job that they can. And I feel that this really comes into play, especially for me, is when I talk about other cultures. So it is a core value of my business and my teaching and my existence (laughs) is to make sure I'm being inclusive of other cultures, um, that I'm open-minded about new art and ideas, that I am not just showing my students the dead white guys, that I'm really expanding my own view of what is art, expanding everybody else's, that, you know, that I, that we, we embrace everything. But with that conversation comes a lot of really sticky situations uh, because I am not a black woman. So if I am then going to talk about an artwork from a black artist, I'm immediately not in that culture. So I immediately am removed from it. And that anything that I say (laughs) could then be attacked uh, because I didn't say it correctly. So like, for example, in graduate school, um, I learned that American Indian is the preferred term for Native American people. See, I couldn't even say American Indian people. But then you get online and you're like, okay, no one else was taught that. So everyone else is saying Native American. So then I'll say American Indian. And then immediately there's 10 people who are like, oh, I can't believe she said that. You know, they called them Indians. And I'm like, well, that's what I was taught. I was taught American Indian is the correct way to go. Um, when I t- when I want to talk about uh, the artwork of Aboriginal people of Australia, someone will always contact me and say, Hey, uh, content, make sure you consult the elders to make sure you're saying this all right. Um, and I've also learned that Hispanic is not the preferred term, but what do you do when you want to celebrate Hispanic Heritage Month? And that's what a Her- Hispanic Heritage Month, and that's what it's called. The, that's what the nation has called it. Uh, you, the United States has called it. So like, okay, I want to celebrate Hispanic Heritage Month. It is a thing in the United States, but I know that Hispanic is not the correct term. I don't think you should consolidate an entire continent's history into one month, but you know, sometimes that's really what we have to work with. So what am, what are we supposed to do in this situation? Then, you know, if we walk around feeling like every move that we make is going to be criticized. If if we say one wrong term, it will then cause us to shut down and spend our lives walking on eggshells, tiptoeing through these minefields of PC minefields, you know? And I get, we want to be politically correct, you know? I get that there is a, um, a journey here of what our culture is, used to be what it is now what it will be like that this is not some sort of fixed thing but I think that we could be less scared to get something wrong because then we're gonna not talk about it so because you know you think about um we live in this sort of extraordinary time when the world is sort of opening up to this greater multicultural global awareness. We live in this time where all of this stuff is happening. There's big shifts happening in all sorts of ways. Um, But we swing from like not talking about something because we're scared to upset someone. And then we end up with an ignorant generation. But then on the other end, you've got people jumping on other people for getting details wrong. So that just doesn't open in anyone up to learning. Making mistakes is part of learning and we have to learn from our mistakes. So if I say something incorrect, of course, yes, you can call, you can tell me about it and I will accept it and I will learn from it. But I am not going to not talk about it, 
for that fear that I'm going to say something wrong. Because being safe is not how we learn. We learn when we're uncomfortable. We learn when we're trying new things. We learn when we learn when we stand up for what we think, even if we might get it wrong, that we are doing our very best. And then that teaches our students to have the grace and the courage to make mistakes, to grow and to learn alongside of them. Um, you know, I, I think there could be people who say that, you know, we, you don't want to just pat someone on the back for trying, but I do th- get that trying is better than not trying and that there is a continuum here. So in the end here, I'm like, we need to lean into those uncomfortable conversations. We could always play it safe, but that is not what artists do. And that's not what we should do. We could only show artists who played it safe, just in case. That would mean robbing our students of the joy and life-giving excitement of Keith Haring uh, because, you know, we're scared that our students might Google him and discover he had addressed hard topics in his art and that, you know, there is parts of his his life that are not elementary ready. Um, or we could skip Frida Kahlo because she has some really painful subjects in her art. But then the students would miss out on the depth and personal reflection that come from an artist who like really steps into her pain and her discomfort. And she shares that all on the canvas. We could we could avoid artists like Botero, uh, Fernando Botero in Colombia, who's has these amazing, joyful, wonderful paintings. But then you're like, oh, gosh, a student might make a fat joke or they might find his Abu Ghraib works that are like really um, heart-wrenching and terrible to see the torture that he depicted. We can't just stay with playing it safe. We can't just stick with, with Da Vinci. And now even I learned just this week that Da Vinci like cut up open real live people and, (laughs) and, uh, and, and, and like took and, um, studied their organs like they were a living i'm not sure how much this is true so i'm just gonna say that like that's me trying to get this <laughs> getting it wrong it could be totally not a a good source but like you know there is no way to play it safe so might as well do things that are that are bold and and introduce students to big ideas and teach them that it's okay to not get it right all of the time because you are going to get it wrong at at some point. You're going to put your foot in your mouth and you're going to feel like an idiot for a few minutes. Someone will criticize you and telling you shouldn't be saying or doing what you are doing. But that is is the, the risk we take that having the conversations that we need to have. And I've spent a lifetime, a lifetime of tiptoeing around trying to be perfect. Like I was saying, trying to never get it wrong. And I'm realizing there really is no way to not get it wrong. And if you're doing something useful, if you're doing something valuable, if you're doing something with purpose, you're going to get something wrong. So I say lean into those hard conversations with your students. You might have a parent that comes back at you or an admin that comes back at you, but you know at the end of the day that you've done the thing that you really, that was the right thing, the thing that's going to make a difference on this world. If we whitewash everything, then what's the point? What's the point in doing any of it? So, you know, it's a very fine line. You can teach about a specific American Indian tribe or you can make a stereotypical feather headdress. You know, like there, there's, there's a, a wide range of things to do here. And we want to constantly be striving for the, the right thing, the thing that's the best. But we are, we're going to get it wrong because your lesson on the mound builders, someone might come see it and say, oh, you're stereo, being stereotypical of the mound builders. But we understand you can't cover an entire culture in one lesson, that's impossible. It's in a whole history of people. So that doesn't mean we don't, we shouldn't cover them at all. Just because I can't cover all of, of the history of the mound builders doesn't mean that I should just throw it away. It means I'm going to do the best I can with what the time I have. And I'm going to teach them, open my students' minds up as best as I can. So we are all doing the best we can. 
I remember when I was a kid, you know, we learned about Christopher Columbus like he was a hero. He he discovered America. He didn't discover America. My teachers got it wrong. But you know what? I survived. I made it through school. Now I know Christopher Columbus was not a hero. And now my 10-year-old daughter is, is learning U.S. history this year in fifth grade. And she learned that Christopher Columbus was a bad guy. So we, we learn from our mistakes. But we don't, we don't learn until we've made them. We don't learn until we've, we've stepped on the ledge and we've jumped off into the unknown and, and doing the best we can. So we... I know now <laughs> that Christopher Columbus was a bad guy. And that because I know that uh, and learning that misinformation, I have a better understanding of what really happened. I have a better understanding of how history was made and how history changes and how history isn't this sort of set in stone thing. That history is constantly evolving. So we don't always have to get everything right. We don't always have to know the answer. We just have to still try. We have to share the cultures that are not our own. And in inevitably, we are going to get something wrong. When you distill an entire culture into a few lessons, you're going to get something wrong, but we have to try. We have to try. And if that means that there is someone around who's like getting on us for trying how we didn't do good enough, you know, that's okay. We, we, we chose to do the hard thing. We chose to confront this. So that means we have to accept any criticism and judgment we get too. But we have to be vulnerable with our not knowing and forgiving our, ourselves when we don't know. And we have to lean in to that unsteady feeling instead of hiding from it. That that unsteady feeling, that's, that's where the learning is going to happen. When you feel truly uncomfortable in your life, when you know, when you know you're doing something amazing and doing something big and doing something great, it doesn't feel good. It doesn't feel like, yeah, I got this. It feels like, oh, crap. <laughs> like, I'm, I am going to fail miserably. This is terrifying, but I'm going to do it anyway. And that is how we grow. So on that same note, we have to be forgiving of other people who are also trying and who are being vulnerable. And we have to understand that everybody doesn't have the same opinion that we have. And then we have to be kind about it and not call people out when they're just doing the best they can. Yes, we can help teach them and educate them, but we got to do it with kindness because that's what we're trying to teach in our students is we want them to be kind. We want them to be open-minded. We want them to be embracing of different types of people. So it's really important not to jump quickly to judgment, but to understanding that we are all doing the best that we can. Remember that. Remember that when you want to criticize another person or another teacher for their choices, remember that when you get something wrong and you feel bad about it, like you are doing the best you can too. So like be kind to your own self when you get something wrong. Like that's not the end of the world. And if you got something wrong, that means you were doing something right to get there. So you're doing the best you can. We see you. We're all doing the best we can. Um, just to, just a call for kindness and compassion and really like lean into doing the things that we know are right, even if it opens you up to a little bit of criticism here or there, that in the end, it's better. It's better to go for it. So there you go. That is my new episode of the Art Class Curator podcast, which I have not done in about a year. And I'm so excited to be back and, um, just talking about the things that I'm passionate about, things that I care about. They won't probably all be as preachy as this, but um, this is something that really does. It's always on the back of my mind. This is something I've been wanting to write a blog post about, but of course I just haven't because, you know, you want to be perfect and you want to say it right because this is a sticky situation, sticky topic, but um, that's it. That's what we're going to do. So I look forward to seeing you again in the Art Class Curator podcast Thank you so very much for listening. And um, please let me know what you think. Share this on social media. Uh, let us know. And also, we would love to have any reviews of the podcast. And because um, that really does support getting this information in the ears of everyone who needs to hear it. Not just information, but, you know, conversations and connection and insight. So with that said, I am going to click stop. I'm going to publish this thing. And it's not going to be perfect. Thank you so much. Bye. 
Thank you so much for listening to the Art Class Curator podcast. Help more art teachers find us by reviewing the podcast and recommending it to a friend. Get more inspiration for teaching art with purpose by subscribing to our newsletter, Your Weekly Art Break. Recent topics include the importance of seeing art in person, famous and should be famous women artists, and 21 days of art from around the world. Subscribe at artclasscurator.com slash artbreak to receive six free art appreciation worksheets. This week's art quote is from Vincent Van Gogh. He says, I have nature and art and poetry, and if that is not enough, what is enough? Thanks so much for listening. Have a wonderful week.